And here we go. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Dean. How are you? I'm doing great. Happy afternoon. It is afternoon for you as well. It Thanks is. for joining us, everybody. We got Lisa Picardo in the house. Uh, I'm Dean Cottrell with T360. We have a great topic we're going to talk about. As we know, the market's been changing and we're going to get in the details. We're going to let everybody roll in here. So with that, I'd like to wish you, Lisa, and everybody that's out there, International Women's Day. Yeah, thank you. Happy International Women's Day. So we did some yeah. recognition. Kudos to all the women leaders out there today. Thanks for joining. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, and there's, a, there's a good number of them out there. We did some recognition on LinkedIn uh, for okay. that yeah, for that day and for with the women within T3 as well. So we're excited. So, you know, one of the things, Lisa, you know, kind of frame today's conversation, you know, the market started to change, started to turn last, what, May, June, we really started seeing it more and more as toward a number. It really started beginning of the year as toward units, but we saw it more and more in May and June. And then, you know, everyone really felt it come in the fall. So, with that, we're going to dive in and give you guys a good bit of strategies and, and some thoughts and ideas. And, you know, it's pretty much uh, almost several of these slides, several of these ideas, strategies. Um, frankly, we could spend, you know, good three, four, five hours going in depth on them. It, they're, they're pretty deep concepts. But with that, we're going to touch them because we want to hit a few things. We want to hit quite a number of things for you so you can have some really good thoughts and ideas about how to really win in this changing market. Right. And I just want to do a shout out. I see a few friends on here. Stacia, Leanne, Lisa, Stephanie. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Chris is running a poll, I believe. Um, Chris, is that poll going? I'm going to start it up right now. Great. Thanks. There's a poll. We'd love you to answer each of you. What's the top reasons agents stay with your team or company? And which consumer segments are still active in your market? We'd love you to share. Chris, you'll share the results with us? Of course. And the panelists can't vote, so we're <laughs> so, so okay. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, I think right now we're at three after the hour. So let's go ahead and jump in, and we will start going through this. Boy, I love okay. that view, too, when it comes up, Lisa. All right, so how to win in a changing market. We're going to okay. dive into four. We're going to dive into four specific areas. The first one is focus on profitability, and we're going to dive into a bunch of areas on this uh, on the profitability areas. And we'll talk about some key areas, key performance areas. We really encourage you to focus in on. The second area we're going to do is showing no fear. Uh, you know, when things change, uh, the idea of leaders, true leaders, right? You know, uh, said to me a long time ago, leaders run in toward the, run toward the fire, not away. And with changing market, run into the market, and we'll talk about strategies of how to really show no fear in this changing world and how to do that where it resonates outside of your head and your mind to the agents and to the team that you run. Step up as a leader. What are some things we suggest as stepping up as a leader and how to accentuate that uh, leadership ability that you have? And then focus on relationships. So we're going to bring it home with the idea of what are the things you can do strategically to focus on relationships and for retention purposes and frankly, culture building and to amplify who you are to your market. And when we come out of this changing market, we're gonna talk about that. We'll look at the phases of real estate markets and where we are and what's gonna be happening in the near future. You're gonna be in a much stronger position uh, through these exercises, through these strategies that we're gonna share with you. So when you come out of this, you're going to be in a better place. And this is our this is our goal with our clients that we work with. All right. Hey, let's so dive in. Focus. We'll let you go first, Dean. All right. So we're going to focus on profitability. We're going to first off is knowing your numbers. One of the biggest challenges we see with working with clients is that just not truly knowing numbers, not knowing your numbers. You don't have to be a number person. You don't need to be a CPA, but you, having some insight into key areas that you really should be paying attention to uh, is really important. So with that, seven key performance indicators, uh, we're going to dive into each one of these independently, but I'll start off talking about them. Number one, return on revenue, your net profit. What are you making and what is that percentage of, from the total? Returned earnings, company dollar. What are you keeping after you pay your sales associates, franchise fees, referral fees? What is that dollar before you go toward expenses and profit as a percentage of the total? All these, the first two and the rest of these guys, 
they're so important. They tell stories. Success leaves clues, and these numbers tell stories. So it allows you to understand strategically maybe where something's off, and then you can then hone in on that, pay attention to it at a higher level, and then strategically make some changes. Number three, average commission percentage per transaction side. That's a very important key performance indicator. And frankly, you have, you have some control over that. Operating expenses. We're going to talk about operating expenses and dive into those key areas, six areas that we're going to highlight for you. Average sales price and make sure you have a sense of where your average sales price is and how that relates to the market and also to your forecasting and your budgeting purposes. Units sold. What is that per person productivity? How many units do you have? And then it ties into these key performance indicators that helps you understand where you are and how things are going, especially compared to the market. And then agent counts. Uh, that is really number one job is recruiting and growing. Um, agent count is very important. We talk about net gain and also churn rate. We're going to share with you some benchmarks in these carriers, key areas. So let's dive in here. First on net profit, on return on revenue. ROR is return on revenue. If you take that gross commission income, this is flip it around. The gross commission income, GCI that comes in, divide that by your profit. And that is going to give you a return on revenue. So if you generated a million dollars and you had a hundred thousand dollars net profit, that's a 10% ROR as an example. So that's where you can kind of get a sense. Now, 8% or higher is in the green. Uh, four to eight is going to be in the yellow and under four is going to be red as toward a benchmark. So that's, that's one of the for first brokerage though, right? Teams is a lot that higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point, Lisa. That for brokerages, we have key, we have benchmarks both for teams and for brokerages. So the teams are going to be much higher. We get up in the 20s, 27 is green, 20 to 27 is yellow and under 20 is red for the team. So much more profitable teams in the team world as toward an ROR if it's running efficiently and effectively. We look at here retained earnings. This is that company dollar, that second area we talked about. So you look at the total gross commission income, that total revenue that's come in and subtract that from cost of goods sold. And we're going to give you examples of cost of goods sold in just two seconds. Well, there they come in now. Agent commissions paid. So that's where you pay your agents, referral fees. Um, also could be franchise fees. These are those uh, examples of cost of goods sold. And if you subtract that from their gross commission income, you e it equals that company dollar that's going to be able to go towards your expenses and your profit. Okay. Average commission per transaction side, the third area, understand the difference. This is one thing, just really hone in on this because if you drill down on your numbers, you're going to see that actually this adds up to be quite a bit of money. So understand the difference. We give you an example here from safe 2.7%. Here comes the poll just dropped up. All right. Top reason agents stay with the team. Team culture and supportive environment leads is number two. And then where are consumers coming from? It looks pretty across the board. That's interesting. Just mm -hmm. non-discretionary has slowed down a bit. Interesting. Investors, cap, yeah, cash buyers, very interesting. Thank you for participating. All right, so on the 2.7, 2.6, uh, give it, it's going to give you an example. So if your average $300 million sales volume, that's what you guys are generating as an example, the commission decrease of 0 0.001, or which is the 0.1%, that example, 2.7 to 2.6, in the company dollar percentage for this organization is 25%, meaning they have company dollar of 25%, $25 on each, on each 100 bucks. That equals $75,000 lost in net profit. So that one-tenth of 1% 1 decrease is going to cost you $75,000 on an example. So it's good for you to know. And as Lisa just clicked on here and it came up, a softening market, really, this is one of the great opportunities that we wanted to share with everybody. This is the time to really go strong in this area and a few other areas uh, that we'll talk about and highlight for you. So a softening market provides a great opportunity for you and the agents to increase their commissions, all right? We Anything had a consult yesterday something? with a large team and um, and they went from 2.7 to 2.2 and, and we figured out their difference was $275,000 to their net profit. So yep. he was shocked, um, that was eye-opening. So just really pay attention to that and you know meet with those agents that are 
you know, discounting and, you know, and reward those agents. I always like to pull, call out an agent in a sales meeting and say, wow, like you're holding at 2.7. That's awesome. How are you doing that? You know, your average commission per transaction side, get them to share, get everybody talking about it. They typically say, uh, because I asked for it, right? That's yeah. one of the typical responses, right? Right. So, uh, but that's a great approach. That's one way to try to move those numbers back up. You also want to break out list side, buy side commissions. If you really want to get, drill it down even more. And I think that's a really great exercise too. But here we go to, let's go to the operating expenses. And mm -hmm. we're going to encourage you guys to bucket this. If you look at uh, QuickBooks, if you're using QuickBooks, unfortunately that def it defaults to alphabetical order. We don't encourage you. I always kind of smile and say, you know, we're not Sesame Street. Uh, we're running, you guys are running, we're running a business. So in that, let's break it into categories. So we have this, we have staff, your staff expenses, which includes any leader compensation, benefits, payroll, everything in that bucket. Facilities, so anything deals with rent, cam charges, common area maintenance charges, property taxes, utilities, you name it. That's your facilities. That should all be bucketed in one area and totaled. Marketing, this is going to be, uh, this is non-lead gen marketing. So it includes those items that you see there. We also have lead gen marketing. So if you're doing lead generation, have an E-team or you are a team and you do lead gen, you definitely want to be very detailed in watching and tracking that rep, that outlay of money and the income that you're making from, that revenue you're making from it. We also want to look at technology. You know, technology, we all have tech, technology expenses, but we want to make sure you know, you're not too high, you're not paying way too much, have all the bells and whistles uh, and spending too much money in the tech space. And then we have other as the sixth category. Um, and I can share with you, if that other becomes too big in an area or two that you want to break it out, you really want to pay attention to it. And this is an opportunity in a changing market for you really to hone in on those expenses. We also encourage you to always compare year over year uh, and period over period. So we just finished up February. So January and February, year to date, 2023 versus 2022. What's your differences? Where are you trending? And it allows you to make some really good executive decisions. All right, great so, <laughs> yeah. So this is something that this is a great quote. We had this in our trends report that just came out in this past December when other people were contra contracting during the great recession, all right, 2008, 9, 10, we were playing offense when the others were struggling to play defense. And this is something we really highlight with our clients and our clients stepping forward to really push the envelope, lean in to a market like this, because this is where you come out. You make the biggest strides and gains in markets like this. All right. Recruiting and retention. So let's dive in and talk about recruiting and retention. Total number of agents, of course. How many agents do you have? And then we want to consider what's the churn rate, retention rate. One of the things Lisa and I do is we do an annual business review. We'll talk about this. One of the exercises that we do for organizations, we do a full audit of their business and we review their financials and everything else and, and their marketing and their tech stack. Uh, one of the things that stands out real clear for us and we look at clearly right up front is what's your churn rate? What's your disassociation rate? Under 10%, that's green. That's performing well. That tells us that you have a connection between your agent population and the leadership. Their agents feel respected, recognized. They feel like they're in a good spot. If you're over 20%, that's going to be in the red. Now, that's for brokerages, all right? Teams are different in their benchmarks, but that's for brokerages. Teams typically have a higher churn rate. It depends on their compensation structure. We also talk about net gain. So one of the goals that we have, depending on your size of organization, we can actually break out a benchmark into your net gain of 20%. Now, if you have two people, you know, or three or five, and you gain one person, or you know, that's 20%. So we want to, you know, it depends on the size of your organization, but as a net gain, you'd love to be growing at least 20% per year. And then again, if you're smaller, that we will actually dive in and talk more about other benchmarks, about numbers and things like that, about how you want to grow and where that's going to take you. And back to churn, one of the things that we encourage you to focus on are those top two quartiles, right? I mean, you really want in the 90% yeah. range um, to retain your top two quartiles, 90, 92% or something like that. That's the goal. We understand, especially some of the teams or companies that hire brand new agents, you know, if we took those brand new agents out that were only there for a few months, the churn rate um, might be lower if you, swap, you know, chopped off the Excellent. bottom yeah, that's one thing when you guys get, you see this, we do a comparison here on this. 
but to you really want to pay attention to that top 50 percent when you become larger when you get 50 60 80 100 plus agents a thousand ten thousand whatever the number is you really want to pay attention to the agents who are really producing the revenue that top two quartiles here's an example of one section of the annual business review document that we look at and it gives you a sense of year of year just kind of give you a visual so you'll see the column says you know uh, what the uh, column heading is, and then last 12 months, and then prior last 12 months, which is 13 to 24 months. We want to get a sense of each agent's in and out. What's the agent population in your market? Some some markets that we work with clients in, they have a low population of agents. Some have a very, very large population. And then you look at your net growth and break it into churn rate and also percentage gain. Um, and then you see the agent, agent count in a year. So we encourage you to watch this, track this. If you have multiple offices, we encourage you to do this on an off per office love, level so you can drill down and work with those leaders in those offices. Okay. All right. So what is your unit count? So we start there and look, we're talking about transaction. We're talking about closed units now. And then, of course, to get a per person productivity, which you could use for recruiting and retention purposes, divide the number of agents into that number. So you have your per person productivity. Anything above a little over 7%, seven units, seven and under is gonna be red. If you go seven to 10 is yellow for brokerages and over 10 is gonna be green. For teams, it's gonna be a much different number. Teams are getting much higher up in the 20s uh, toward a unit count for green, yellow, and red. And most importantly, right? <laughs> yeah, this is we, one of the things that we talk about. Yeah, we recently had a call from a client, you know, a client that we're working with, and he's like, well, I'm just trying to figure out how many units do I need to do? How much business do I need to do to break even? And we're like, well, for starters, you want to be profitable, not break even, but really helped him get into these numbers, right? So. Yep. yep. And here we give you some interesting numbers on, and this is from our research and our trends report. It gives you a sense on luxury, mid-market and below market. Uh, as to for prices, medium volume per agent, and the medium units per agent, looking at our Mega 1000 report from 2022. Um, and what luxury, uh, the definition of luxury per this is triple, as you can see, triple the medium uh, price point right there at 361, 700 being the medium, and then triple that, that's the million 85,100. That's where that comes from. All right. Other areas. One of the things that we constantly work with clients on, open up the idea of, you know, outside of just the real estate business, real estate sales business, where other revenue streams you can pull in. Mortgage and title, MSAs or marketing service agreements, joint ventures is JV or owned mortgage and title or entities. Insurance, home warranties, property management. Property management is one too that we really put an emphasis on this one, that's an inflationary hedge. As you know, the market comes off in units and sales, rentals go higher. So they feed each other. So that's actually something that a lot of our clients that have property management divisions, it allows them to really ride out the rough times. It smooths it out a little bit more so. It's more of an even balanced way to approach real estate. And you don't have the ups and downs and sways as much as somebody who's not in that space. So we do encourage that. As, the, as an additional revenue stream property management. Other areas you want to consider as additional revenue streams for you is company generate business. Many of you generate business, whether you're a team or, or if you're a team and you already have your, that's your, maybe you might be formatted completely on company generate business. If you're not and you're a brokerage, the E-team is a great way to run a team. Look at what teams do. They do it very successfully. They drive a very good ROR, return on revenue, when they're doing it well and doing it right. So the E-team is a great way for brokerages, frankly, to claw back company dollar back to your brokerage through generating company business and then placing them with agents on an E-team, as an example, and then retaining a good bit of that commission income for that lead and for that benefit, for the support that you're providing in that area. Okay. Well, that was a lot. I'm focused on profitability. Let's talk about number two, show no fear. Show no fear. So on this, it's all about knowledge. You know, one of the things we really encourage you is just constantly be communicating to your sales professionals, whether your team members or whether it's your brokerage, uh, giving them the latest and greatest. You don't need to have an answer to everything, but provide them information. What's going on? What's the latest going on in the marketplace? Here are the four phases of a real estate cycle. 
So you can see the far left, we'll start with its recovery. Then we go into expansion mode. Hyper supply is that third phase. And the fourth phase is the recessionary market. You can see at the very bottom in bold, it says this is traditionally, if you look back roughly 100 years, this is a roughly 16 to 18 years is this whole four phase process. Um, the expansion phase, this has been one of the largest, longest expansion phases we've seen in a long time. And we've just moved into that hyper supply recession market now. In the recessionary, you see in the bottom of recession on the far right there, it says two to three years. That's the shortest phase of uh, the four cycles, the four phases within this cycle. So right now we're headed in from, and we say hyper supply, um, we are short of supply. That's one of the uniquenesses that we're currently experiencing in today's market. I'm sure you've read a lot about this or heard about it, but we've been short of inventory really since the Great Recession, and, and we're, we're tremendously short of inventory. So that's going to, frankly, help us move out of this process, this more of a recessionary time in a faster uh, time frame. Anything, Lisa, you see on this you want to share? No, I, I think, um, yeah, it's weird because it's not hyper supply. We're kind of like right there between hyper supply and recession, right? But we're never really going to have, based on everything I'm hearing, a hyper supply. Right. We have so, more of a supply than we had, but yeah. it's not a hyper supply, right? Right. All right. And talking about this, what are some things you can do? Continue to research the market. This is on the show, no fear, right? So constantly stay up on what's the latest. There's been in real estate news. Uh, I've been, I looked at some articles came out in real estate news or given the latest on what's going on in the marketplace, things like that. So there's a lot of information out there and different resources that you can constantly continuously stay up and then share that with your, your partners, whether it's a team or a brokerage, provide insight and perspective that resonates with your agents. And then think about how you want to communicate this out. So if you have a larger operation, you might want to consider doing a monthly update video. As an example, highlight the latest market statistics, what you see, what's going on nationally, locally, things like that. So you just give a better perspective that you're on top of it. You're keeping an eye out and you're sharing that information with your um, partners, whether again, it's your team members or whether it's your brokers, your agents in your brokerage. I think that quote is so true, right? Knowledge is the antidote to fear. So I think as a leader, like anything you can provide, talking points and how to respond and all, right. all of that is really helpful. And then yep. we move into step up as a leader, right? So um, so in this, we're talking about like really being their business advisor and their coach. Um, that graphic talks about the four agent archetypes. It's um, it's a presentation that we do focused on the four ways that agents make money. So really help them understand, like help them understand where do their last 10 tr transactions come from? You know, how who are they working with? What are they doing to market themselves? You know, outline tools that they need in each of these areas and what you provide in each of these areas. You want to encourage them to call their sphere of influence. It's shocking to me how many people still don't, you know, I, there's all these stats, right? That agents, I mean, people want to work with their agent again, but then they never hear from them. Um, I talk about my other half. He spent 20 years living in the same town, sold four houses. And when he went to sell his last house, he didn't have an agent. Nobody kept in touch. So really encourage your agents to call their sphere of influence, you know, get everybody together in the office, say, let's all go make five calls and come back and talk about it. Train them to do an annual equity review. If anybody's a ninja company, that's, that's the real estate review, right? Different from a CMA. Um, go on a listing appointment. As a leader, when was the last time you went on a listing appointment? I really think that that's something you should do, you know, every month or so. Go on a listing appointment with an agent, see what they're dealing with. Um, encourage them to do open houses. Open houses are a huge um, opportunity to bring in business. Provide spear marketing support and materials. We have a whole module in our T3 Fellows program where we talk about this and all the materials and give you ideas of things you could do to support your agents. Focus on primary markets and that geographic farm. I'm going to let Dean speak to this, this slide. Yeah, on the, so primary markets or geo or geographic farming, this is one area, this is just one section of a spreadsheet that we have that takes you through analyzing a, a geo farm, a primary market, a subdivision, whatever it might be, and analyzing turnover rate, what's the average sales price, and then get a sense of 
what the capture percentage would be and what would that equate to in revenue to the company and to the agent. Uh, in this scenario, it's to the agent. But as you dissect down, you know, the buyer leads that come off the signs or the open houses and other, uh, other spin-off business that comes in addition to that listing selling and things like that, you kind of work through the numbers. So 1,200 home subdivision, and you got to figure out, okay, what are we going to do as toward marketing costs? This is where you can really work with your agents, hone in what would be that way to market to an area subdivision over the course of 12 months. Well, we're maybe going to do some activities that are not going to cost us much, but we're going to try to engage everybody to do the Heart Walk, uh, American Heart Association, or go do a food drive for the local food pantry, right? And then other months, I'm going to send out some lottery cards on uh, St. Patty's Day. I don't know, green beer, hand out green beer, whatever it might be. What's the cost going to be? It might be postcards as well, just listed, just sold, things like that. So it might be cost, whatever that cost is, and then figure that out over 12 months. And then what we find when we do this analysis and what we find in real life is the ROI, the return on investment is huge. The challenge with this exercise and with this area for business is it's really a longer play. It's a 12 to 18 month, 18 month return where you're going to get these type of returns where everybody's pretty much in, hey, I'm looking for a quick fix. Well, this is not going to be the quick fix. It's going to be that 12 month, 18 month. I personally, when I moved from Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C., right out of college and got a real estate license, I went into this uh, primary market. And my first year, I did a 7%. They say 10%. If you do a monthly marketing to a subdivision on a monthly basis, you should get a roughly 10% of that business. And then it grows. I did 7% the first year. It went to 17 the third year. And then it was in the mid 20s. So really that third year, you just owned it. It was a really awesome way to generate revenue. So this is more of a longer term play. It's more of a being a business coach to help support. And one thing that we say also, Lisa, it just popped in my mind from you said this earlier today, um, this is where you own your business more than mm -hmm. rent it. So if you're real focused on buying leads and going and, you know, and whether whatever the lead source is, you're really renting your business. They, they could change that pipe. They could turn that faucet off those leads. They could change it. They could cut, make it more expensive. So you're really at a whim there. Nothing, not to say that you don't want to stay focused and you can you can make a lot of money in that space. This here is a longer play, but it's actually you have more control and it's really you're starting to own your business on this side. And I think um, the last piece on this, we have a client that's a team. They have something like 40% market share in a 5,000 home subdivision. So like there's huge money to be made. The other thing I just want to mention is the whole idea of niche marketing. I think really getting your ag agents focused on a niche um, is is a way is a great way to go in this changing market. So I'm going to talk a little bit about focusing on relationships. How funny is this, right? The grass is always greener in a changing market. Agents are constantly evaluating their options, right? So that means for both retention and recruiting, they're looking to see what's out there, right? So this can work for and against you. So um, so retention, right? The X factor is you. I mean, how well do you really know your agents? Are you are you really getting to know them? What's on their life list? What are their dreams? Where you know what's happening in their lives? Right? Meet one on one with them. Take them out for coffee. Sit down to find out what's really going on. Dig deeper. You know, ask what's working for them. Tell me more. You know, really get to know them. I think they'll really appreciate it. Um, follow them on social media if you're not already, so you can learn more about them. More in retention, culture's key. Um, we saw that in the survey earlier, right? The questions that Chris put up, that was number one, right? Why agents stay. Host office events and lunches. Dean likes to say breaking bread with your agents. That builds more robust mm -hmm. relationships. Do a quiz format at meetings to get input. Instead of just talking at everybody, ask them what they're hearing, what they're seeing, what's happening. Get people sharing. Engage everyone in a volunteer day. And then we know that in a changing market, it, it's a great opportunity to recruit. We do, um, and again, like Dean said, we could spend hours just on this slide alone <laughs> on, um, on what's your, re revisit your recruiting process. This is our 10 step recruiting process that we go through in our, in our T3 fellows module. And we really deep dive into all of the pieces of this, but what is your process? Like revisit that, connect with your prospects. 
review your prospect list. Hopefully you all have like your top 25 prospects on your desk on a list and you can check in and see what's going on with them frequently, your hot prospects. Dive into their numbers, see what's going on. Pick up the phone to check in. I mean, it's just how a few calls you get is amazing. So people really do like to get a phone call every now and again. Schedule an in-person meeting. Stats show that three in-person meetings a week equates to 24 recruits a year. So schedule those meetings, ask great questions, listen, dive deeper to uncover pain points. You know, really focus on getting to know those prospects. Discuss their goals and how you can help reach them. And then continue cultivating them, right? Continue building relationships, connect on social media again, call or text to congratulate them on a new listing or a sale, send handwritten notes, share helpful articles or conference materials, send a book, show leadership, be their broker before you're their leader. I mean, before you're their broker, I think that's just so important, right? When a deal goes under contract, reach out, congratulate them, let them know they're in good hands with your agent, but ask how, if, you know, them to reach out if you can help in any way. And then um, the real thing is make the ask. I think so many people like we cultivate, we cultivate, we build relationships and we never really make the ask. So really focus on that and craft and hand and master handling their objections. These are the most common ones that we see. You should, you should be able to roll these off your tongue, right? What would you say if somebody says, I'm not interested in making a move right now? Dean, why don't you answer that? You do a great job at that. Sure. Yeah. I'm not interested in making a move right now. I always say that's the best one. Cause I'm like, you know what? I have called so many people and every time I call, I have actually never called somebody on, this is the truth. I've never called anybody on the day they made the decision that they were leaving that day. So I'm glad that you're happy where you are right now. I get that, but you know, in life things do change. Uh, and so one point you might not be as happy tomorrow or next or next month than you as you are right now. And I'd love to be on that short list of brokers or team leaders that you'd consider working with. I'm happy where I am. Yeah, well, good. I heard you're happy. I heard you're a positive person. Frankly, I'm not looking for negative people. Uh, this is good. Be you know, have, as you can tell, I'm just saying have fun with this. The best recruiters that I've worked with. They have fun with it. They engage. They're engaging. I love my broker. That's actually one of the the most difficult ones right there. I love my broker, my manager. That's where uh, Lisa's That's where the culture piece is in, right? Oftentimes. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And that's where you need to break bread. A lot of this, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, hey, this is really like going back to the basics. It is. It is, right? It's spend time with people, connect with people. That's a difficult one. The way you can try to, you have to kind of hit that one you know, depending on the relation, the situation, but at the end of the day, that manager, that broker, that uh, person does not have a picture of you and your family in their wallet or their purse. All right. So ultimately you're going to have to make the best business decision for you. And that's where I hope that I'm on that list of brokers that you'd consider working with. So you might have to sever it a little bit. You might have to go a little hard at that one. Um, you want to I'm on a commission those. split. I like, I mean, this one I think is a good one. If you can show that you're going to, you know, if you really put together those proof points and impact statements and you can say, you know, ultimately you're going to do more deals with us or your average highest average sell price. Are you more interested in your commission split or your bottom line? You know, things like that, that you can say. So when That's we do our, one. yeah, when we do our recruiting um, process module, like we give you a lot of scripts and we really work through these, all of these. So I'm having a great year. And then focus on relationships, recruiting, retention, everything that you do for recruiting, you should be doing to retain your agents, every single thing that we just talked about. So, um, so rinse and repeat, keep doing the same thing. Um, so again, back to the four um, steps, focus on profitability, show no fear, step up as a leader and focus on relationships. I'm just going to take a few minutes just to tell you about how we can support your organization. Dean, I'll let you speak to this. Yeah, so this is where we can help you guys dive into your your businesses, work with you. So there's two extra. There's actually four areas we'll share with you. An annual business review. This is I mentioned this earlier. It's actually an excellent exercise where we do a strategic evaluation of your business and look to how we can improve uh, everything in there from recruiting and retention and revenue and pro frankly profitability, right? And your productivity. So it's a deep audit. 
We also look at a marketing, your marketing. We look at your um, tech stack, your, what you're providing in the technology space, things like that. So it's a full deep dive of your business. And that's called our annual business review. That typically is that short, quick. We can do that and come out with a recommendations list typically within a 30 to 45 day period, depending on how fast you're able to pro provide your information to us. The next one here is the fellows program. This is a program we've run. Uh, we've had a number of people go through it. You're going to see some testimonials here in a second that have gone through this program. But this is an MBA style program. I mean, there's not a lot of MBAs out there in, in real estate, and running a real estate operation, right? Uh, you also can't talk and, and work with your broker down the street or your team leader down the street you compete with. So this is an area that it combines individual work on your business with us directly, along with collaborating with other like-minded growth-minded entrepreneurs who are running brokerages or running teams, and it's geographically exclusive. So you don't have anybody in your marketplace. Um, so we run that program twice a year. You can get more details on it at T3 Fellows. We have a spring program launching this month. So now's the time to get into that. We'd love to have you. We still have some space. Yeah, we're saying lean in to that point. Yes. If you're going to move, this is a good time to lean in and move forward on that. So just go to T3 Fellows, it gives you details and you could also apply. It's an application process for that program. The third thing we're gonna talk about is valuation. Some of you, you know, it's a great opportunity to say, hey, what is my organization worth? Um, and also, if you're looking to merge or do an acquisition or be acquired, uh, we help in that space. So if you're looking at any of those things, uh, you reach out to us, we can help support you in that area. We're working right now uh, with a team partnership that are going to separate. And so we're working on evaluation for them, that sort of thing. Yep. And then C-level. Yep. So C-level consulting is where we take and we work. So some of you that are listening to the recording or being on this live call right now, if you're a large organization and you have leaders that are running regions or sales offices, things along those lines, C-level is where we come in and work with those founders that are owners on a full audit, that annual business review. That's the first exercise we do. We wanna make sure we audit, fully understand your business, give you some thoughts, suggestions, ideas right out of the gate, but also then work on a strategic intent exercise. What's your future vision of the end state of your business? And then we work with the leaders underneath those to make sure there's an alignment between the senior leaders and all the managers and the leaders that you have in your organization. So that's called C-level custom consulting. And then we have and some results. Fun. Yep, go ahead. So Mike Kelly just completed um, our um, fellows, one of our fellows class. He just graduated. This is a quote that he just shared with us. And um, so he's in Foothills, North Carolina. So he learned a ton from the program. He's really planning to implement. Interestingly, one of the things that came out of this from Mike was he was an independent. And as part of this um, exercise, decided to French, you know, to join a franchise. So we see things like that. You know, we have a team that, or a company that decides they don't want to own a company anymore. I mean, you know, everybody looks at different ways that they want to do business. You want mm -hmm. to speak about Tammy? Yeah, so Tammy, uh, you know, Tammy came out and worked with Tammy. She's in the Myrtle Beach market. I worked with T3. We were able to create such a strong foundation, great processes. She was a team leader, had a team business along with running a brokerage. So she was kind of both doing both. The branding, she loved the branding exercise, one of her favorites, learned how to restructure a brokerage. Um, so they implemented a lot of things, her and Liam, her husband. Uh, so Tammy and Liam were fantastic and they're with Next Home Seekers. And then we've got Danny Joyner. So Danny runs a nice size operation organization, him and David and Tom down there and C. Dan Joyner, Berkshire Hathaway. Working with T360 has been the best thing we've done as an organization, hands down in my 30 years with the company. All the money, he's a second generation. So it's his dad's dad's company, he's passed, but it's his company now. All the modules have been really fantastic. Our brokers have really bought in. This is the C level. So this gives you a perspective of someone who is a senior leader and then working with leaderships uh, or leaders underneath. I don't know what we've ever what we've ever started out on something that was more meaningful or more beneficial to us than this process with them. So it's real powerful for Danny and his team. Okay. okay, so next steps, if you want to scan this, you can um, you can uh, set up a meeting with Dean or I. We'd be happy to have you. Yep, you want to hear about, talk about your organization. Sometimes, you know, talking to a consultant, 
you know, it may be a little scary. Like, I don't know if I want to open my books. I don't know if I want to talk to somebody. You know, we're not scary people. Hopefully you come across that we're not too scary because uh, we're not. And get some more insight into your business. We'll have a great conversation about your business. We'll probably give you some thoughts and ideas on that call. And if something makes sense for you to move in, timing is everything in life, uh, then we'll talk about that, what that looks like with you or for you, okay? Okay. Any questions? So we can use the chat and throw out any questions. And we'll look forward to, we'll hang out here for a few minutes and see if anybody has any, any questions for us. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, no questions. I don't see any questions. Oh, no one's coming in. Yeah. Great but presentation. I'm, I'm, Thank you. Here's a question. Great presentation, they said. <laughs> oh, thank Thanks, you. Diane. I'm sorry. <laughs> Diana. All right, guys. Thank you all very much. Uh, go out there and make it happen. So we're excited for you. This is a great opportunity. As we said, lean in. With change like this, this is the time to really push forward. Everybody else, a lot of people are in fear. They're backing out. They're pulling out of a lot of things. This is for you to lean in, push forward. It's a time to really make a big difference in your business. So with that, if we can help you, reach out. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Bye. Lisa. Thanks, great Steve. job. See you guys.